Okay. So like we talked about before, write an algorithm to determine if a number n is happy. Return a bool. A, no, a happy number is a number defined by the following process. Okay, this is the meat of the question. Guys, what do we have to do here in order to like determine with our code if a number is happy? What are some key aspects of this prompt? It needs to be positive according to this. Yeah. We need to split it into its separate parts. What do you mean by split it into? Digits, individual digits. Yeah. Great. And then after we split it into its individual digits, what should we do then? We need to add it all back together. Add, oh, no. Then we need to square each of the digits and add the sum of them. And then we check if that sum is one. So Kevin, if that sum is one, what do we know? It's a happy number, so you return true. Return true. Then this is the super annoying part is what happens if the sum isn't one? What are some thoughts you had? Um, what I did was, I, if it wasn't one, I uh, inserted it into a set to keep track of all the other sums. Okay. Why'd you do that? What, what led you to think you should do that? Um, I did this, I had a recursive solution. So I kept passing the sum, I mean the set of sums into the function. Well, what did, what, sorry, what did you do with that set? Like what was its purpose? Um, if the sum is already in the set, then you have to return false. Hmm. Is that because if the sum is in the set and it's come back again, that that means you would otherwise be in an infinite loop, like it can't get out of that? Yeah. Yep. So let's, here's the meat of the question, right? Do the whole sum of its squares thing, then repeat the process until the number equals one or it loops endlessly in a cycle, which does not include one. So a happy number is one where we do this whole squaring and then adding and it eventually equals one, but not all numbers are happy numbers. And if a number is not a happy number, it will never equal one. And what Kevin is saying is the number is not happy, it and the numbers that we square plus sum to get it will never be happy. And so, for example, does anyone have a good example number that was not happy? It helps to always have examples with these. 11. Cool. So if we've got the number 11, if I square each digit, This one squared plus one squared is how much, Kevin? Two. Mm -hmm. It's two, and then two squared is four, and then four squared is 16, and then 16 squared is 37, and then 37 square, sorry, 16, if you square six and you square one and you add them together, you get 37. 
37, if you square seven, you get 49. If you square three, you get 58. And then we keep going. I know this is a pain. Eight squared is 64. Five squared is 25. So we get 89. Then 89, blah, blah, blah. Kevin, am I ever going to get one in this cycle? No. Okay. So you get 145. And then if I square four, I square five, I get 16, and I get 25, and I get 41 plus one is 42. And then, Eric, do you want to walk us through the math, please? I was just running the code. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Um, all right. So this is kind of the decision point, is we are going to keep squaring and squaring the, the digits and then adding them together. And then eventually, if a number is unhappy, at some point in this chain of doing all that squaring, we are going to encounter one of the numbers from before. Because there are only certain, there are only a certain number of values, of integer values, that are unhappy. And you start to just see a pattern. This is a cycle because when I square four now, it's just going to do everything I saw after the last time I squared four. And it's just gonna keep cycling and cycling and cycling. And so what Kevin said is, hey, I'm gonna put each unique result of squaring and summing into a set to keep track of what I've already seen. And if I see it again, that means I'm in an unhappy cycle. So if I see same number twice, I'm in an unhappy cycle. Let's freeze right there. How do we feel about that? Is there any, is, there any advantage of saving it in a set over saving it in a dictionary? Yes. Why set as opposed to dictionary? Any suggestions? Tell me why you did it in a set, I guess. We're trying to prevent the duplicates, so we could just check if it contains and um. So you can think of a set, if you're using a dictionary, chances are you use that dictionary just to see if that key already had a value, right? You didn't need to keep track that there were two or that there were six times that you saw a certain key. It just did that key get a value yet. In that case, think of a set as almost like a dictionary whose values are true or false. The set is just inserting the keys that you found. So since we only needed you, we only need to know if that thing happened one time, we could just throw it in a set and we could say, hey, I saw this thing. Looking up, set is oh one just like looking up a key in a dictionary is oh one but the main difference is for a set we can just say set dot contains some value as opposed to having to manipulate some key value pair in a dictionary. So basically, we don't need value that a dictionary, the value that a dictionary would provide for a key. 
just want to know if the key exists. So that's why a set is kind of just breaking it down and saying, hey, we just, did we see it yet? Yes, no? Well, if we saw it, it's in the set. And we can look that up just using a set contains. Awesome. All right, what else is in this problem? Let's take a look again. Number must be positive. We'll split it into its individual digits, square each digit, and sum the result of squaring each. How did people do that? How do people do this step? Kevin, do you want to tell us about your array? Yeah. <clears throat> so um, first, you have to convert the int into a string in order to put the individual components into an array, then convert it back into um, get the number value of the characters to have uh, strings be ints. That's cool. what that long line does. <laughs> So using an array, we said, let me go ahead, turn that whole thing, turn that whole number. So I had the number 145, that'll become the string 145, and then an array, one comma four comma five, then compact map looking for the whole number value. Okay. So this splits it into an array of numbers, right? Yeah. And then that split it up. What did you do after that? Then I looped through the split array and I added um, the um, I times I to a variable called sum, which is just an int. So that split array, if we map that, what would that look like? Or would you want to do something else other than map? Uh, um, this is what I meant. Cool. I like that. So Kevin says, we use a for loop here. We do something like this. Okay. Our sum is an int. For i in array sum plus equals i times i. Cool. There's another way we could do that a higher order function. It's not going to be map. Which one could we use to do the same kind of math? Go ahead and just yell it out. Reduce? Yep. You can use a reduce. 
what is reduce always have? Reduce always has two arguments. One is the quote unquote initial result. And then the second is a closure. So we could use trailing closure syntax. And we could just say blur, blur. Ugh. Right. Like that. So this closure is actually going to take in the result of the previous iteration and whatever value it's looking at in that iteration of the loop. So this isn't actually a plus equals, it's just a plus. Saying at each step, just like we have here, take that result and then add to it the squared, or add to it what happens when we multiply the element we're looking at times itself. Cool. Okay. Then maybe we check to see if that whole thing equals one. Anyone do a different thing other than use an array? So there's a way we could have done this with math, actually. Talking about mod? I am talking about mod. Can you tell me about mod? Yep. <clears throat> Instead of using like the reduce or, well, I don't know about the compact math, but um, if you mod 10 something, it'll give you the remainder. So for a number like 145, 145 mod 10 will give you five then you can divide the what's you know the original number by 10 it'll give you um, the 14 mod 10 again it'll give you 4 divide by uh, what's left over it'll give you 1 cool. then As equal to that, which is one. Everything we want to square here is the result of doing a modulo on the number. What are we kind of noticing? There's a pattern here, right? This is kind of, this is a math trick that applies to a ton of problems, not just this one. But for any var num, let's say it's equal to 145. If you want to look at all the digits, you can set up a while loop and say a while num is greater than zero. Our digit is equal to num modulo 10, and then num is equal to num divided by 10. And that'll let you look at every digit here. And all we need to do to apply what we have up here is to just say, well, I'm going to get a sum. Our sum is zero. And then say something like sum plus equals digit times digit. And that's it. So this is 
I would recommend this. It's a good handy trick for any time you want to be looking at the digits of a number without converting it to any other type, without converting it to a string or an array or anything like that. If you want to be looking at the digits, just create a while loop where you divide. And let me add this back in because this is going to iterate through three times. So it's going to look at 145, then look at 14, then look at one. And then the last time it does that, one divided by 10, when we do integer division, which way is this going to round? Always, always. Hey, Albert. If I divide one by 10, what is that going to equal? It's always, always going to round which direction? Uh, to, it's around down. Cool. So one divided by 10 is how much? Um, one divided by 10 is one. It's going to round down, though. Huh? It's going to round down. Zero? I don't know. OK. Yes, zero. So 1 divided by 10 is zero with some remaining. Whenever you divide by anything and you get a remainder, if you have an integer division, it just drops that remainder. So 1 divided by 10 is zero. And that's why this loop will terminate once you divide by 10 that last time. OK. So with all this info, let's take a seven minute break and then see if we can put together a really good solution to our, uh, you know, cool. cool. So if I want to determine if a number is happy, we looked at all this stuff and then in the end, here's my starting point. There are two cases, there are two situations we want to check for. First, number one. What's the other case? Is there a duplicate number in the set? Ah, so we'll need a set. How do we make a set? Let's call it number scene. Do you want to say it's of type set? We could. We could use type inference too, though. How are we going to make? Let's just make an empty set. Is it set angled brackets int? Then what do we need to create it? Uh, they gave it away. Cool. So we've got an empty set. Sounds good to me. And let's just remember what we can do with a set. So a number scene, I can, let's contain. So that's a lookup to see if something is in there. That's an int. And how do I add something to a set? Not append. Insert. Oh, so it's an insert. So those are the two things I'm going to do with my set. I'm going to check if certain numbers are in there. And if they're not, I'm going to insert them in there. If they are in there. If there's a duplicate number in the set, what do I do with this entire function? Is the number happy? 
So I'll return false. What about if the number is one? It's happy. It's happy, so I'll return true. Awesome. And that's gonna be the basic setup for our question. Well, that's nice. What should I do now? I should probably figure out how I'm going to get this stuff in there. Could I just do that? Split the thing, split the num, square its digits. I'm going to do this a whole bunch of times, right? Until I reach one or a duplicate, I'm going to do this, this whole process over and 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 over. How do we feel about that? Because here is the dirty little trick. If it's a happy number, we also get a cycle. Because one squared is one, and then if you take that and you squared, it's one, and it's one, and it's one, and it's one. So over and over, we are just going to end up with one. So either way, we're going to use a while loop that checks for a few things. We're going to start by. I don't know. Let's see if the number is one. Well, for the first time we do it, guard n is equal to one. That's nice. But is this guard statement going to work for my loop? So it's not, because if I go and I say, let's say there's var num is equal to n, and then that n gets iterated over some other while loop. While num is, let's say, greater than one, do that, okay. So if the number is greater than one. Hold on, why do you have two while loops? So we're gonna be doing different things here, right? And that's kind of the pain. This whole inside while loop is just to take a number and then find the sum of its digits squared. Now that's a great question you just asked. Why are there so many things going on? Maybe we should make it its own function. Maybe we can just move that stuff. We'll make it the sum of squared, what are these digits? Any number, imp. What should this helper function, we'll call it, turn? An int. An int. Yeah. Let's move all this stuff right in here. Let's create that intermediate sum. Our sum is zero. And then return sum. I think that'll make it all easier for us. I'll call this n all the way through. Have one more M num. Thank you. Now this function is not going to work for a specific reason. What's that reason? 
is Annalette. Why is Annalette? Whatever you declare in the parameter, isn't that a let? Yep. So let's do something intermediate. Let's just say, call this guy num again. So whatever argument comes in, we will iterate over that number until we do that and end up with the sum of these square digits. So again, that's just for one time through. Can, can I ask something? Because uh, I missed it before we were on break. Um, yeah. For the while loop of num being greater than zero at the end, why do we divide it by 10? Because what dividing by 10 is going to do is it's going to take 145 and then make it 14. So for example, sorry, let me do that all as one example. If in my iteration I'm dealing with 145, digit is five. And now once I've gotten to look at the thing in the ones place, all I want to be looking at in the next iteration is the next digit down. So think of dividing by 10 just as slicing off the rightmost like place value or slicing off the ones place there. So in the next iteration of the loop, the ones place is four, so that I can look at four when I look at the digit. And it's kind of like iterating. Yeah, I can see. Cool. So that's how we're going to get for any one number. That's how we're going to get the sum of the squared digits. Now, all we have to do is check those two conditions. So see if num is one and see if num was in the set. The reason I'm using a while loop and I'm saying while well, number is greater than one is because if eventually by calling this function inside of our while loop. If I say uh, num is going to be the sum of the square digits of that same number, if it ends up being one, it's going to exit this loop, which means that I can move this whole return statement down here. So let me comment that out instead of deleting it. Having a guard up here would check only one time. But the way that we are kind of like simulating that for our while loop is we're saying, okay, num has to be greater than one. If num ever ends up not being greater than one, then num is going to be one. We're going to assume that there are positive numbers because I believe it says that in there starting with any positive number. Great. So the first positive number is one. If we're in this while loop, we are still processing, we are still figuring it out. But if we are out of that while loop, we can just return true because we have the num equal to one. So if we get the value one, we exit the loop. And, or let's say we are no longer in the loop. So we can return true here after the loop. And until we reach one, what we're going to do is we are going to call this sum of square digits as many times as we need to until we get to one or we get a duplicate. And so for each iteration, whatever sum of the square digits is, we are going to insert that into our set. So in the number scene set, whenever we calculate, 
So whenever we go and we calculate a new number, we want to insert it for each iteration. So all I have to do is say numbers seen dot insert. And then the member there is num and I'm just gonna say here num is equal to that. And this will iterate, it'll say, okay, if I had a five. I will insert that here and then I will go and I will square it and I will square each digit and sum it. So I get 25. Now in the next iteration, we had 25, but this loop is not going to stop. How do I get this to terminate? This is our one last big step. Are we doing this yet? Yeah, we don't have the dot contains yet. Okay, where should I put the dot contains? That's the last and most important part here. Do we need an if statement in there if this dot contains? Sure. So if number seen dot contains, what am I looking for? Num. Awesome. So if it contains num, what does this function do? Return false. Awesome. So for each iteration, we end up, we start basically each iteration with a new number because initially we come in with num and then afterwards we come in with whatever the result of calling this function is. So in each iteration, num is a new value. And if it's in the set, then that means we have a cycle. So we return false. If not, we keep working through. And the result of this while loop again is we either get a cycle where we don't see one or we get one. And then that's it. That's all we did to handle that. What is a way that we could, as a final step, condense lines 125 through 126 into one line? What? How can we take this if statement and turn it into one line? An or? So we don't, we don't quite need an or because we're only checking one condition. Return numbers that numbers seen that contains. I don't know, that wouldn't work. Mm. You're just saying line 124 to 126, not line 127 as well? Correct. Are, are you talking about using a ternary? So we don't need a ternary. That's something we see a lot. It's gonna involve kind of reversing the logic of the condition. Guard statement. Yeah. Kevin, can you talk me through your guard statement? Uh, guard not number seen that contains none. Mm -hmm. Else return this. So we've said before. Guard is kind of like the opposite of an if. 
here in this line, it literally is the opposite, right? Guard that we haven't seen numbers before. Else, so if we have seen numbers before, return false. If we do see a cycle, return false. That's logically the same thing as if you see it, return false. Guard, mm -hmm. again, is just an inline, it's like a quick shorthand way to say, at this step, let's make sure this is not happening, or let's make sure something is happening. Otherwise, and that's the else statement, just do something else, return false. So our guard here is to make sure that the function stops in its tracks if it contains the number. And this should work, I don't know. You wanna try it out? Let's assert some things. Is happy. Assert is a quick way of not quite doing unit tests, but testing that you get the result you wanted in a given line. So let's assert is happy is false. Uh oh. Ah, it's not a unit test, that's right. We're just asserting a condition. Okay, looks like nothing happened. But you just get a crash, so this is kind of like fatal erroring. If the condition you evaluate for in here does not work, or it ends up false, then you just get a crash. And so, 20, which we calculated before, was in this long cycle right here as an unhappy number, is not happy, which means our is happy should come up false. Did anyone find any happy numbers? Oh, a good one to check would be is that true? Looks it. It says, so it is happy 23 true. Cool. All right, that's a quick way to test our function. How do we all feel about this? There are a lot of steps just to get to about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen lines of code.